All right, so we're doing trig functions of real numbers today, and this is in relation to what we've been doing, not necessarily how you might remember this from geometry. So let's start with your objectives. Uh, you will be able to identify all the trig functions as they apply to the unit circle. You will be able to identify the signs of the trig function based on the quadrant, and you will be able to evaluate trig functions using the unit circle. All right, so let's start with definition of trig functions um, as it applies to this. So let t be any real number, and let point x, y be the terminal point on the unit circle determined by that t. So our trig functions would be defined as follows. These are the three main ones that you're used to. The sine of t equals y. Okay, so that would be your y coordinate. Cosine of t would be your x and your tangent of t would be your y over your x when x doesn't equal zero. So you kind of saw this today, like on the Kahoot, um, you may have seen, you know, your points labeled like this, because basically that's what it is. Cosine is your x value and sine is your y value. So and then of course tangent is your y over your x, based on the unit circle and the right triangles they form, as we kind of saw a little bit today. Now, if you, even if you wrote this down in class, I want you to rewrite it down because not everyone gave the right information. So uh, these are inverse operations. All right, so this is the easiest one to remember right here. Tangent and cotangent, those are easy. It's these that get confused. Okay, so you've got cosine and secant. The easiest way that I remember this one is that basically the C's and the S's swap places, kind of like with an inverse. Um, I know it's just a silly little way of doing it, but that'll hopefully help you remember. And then uh, the opposite, uh, the inverse operation of sine is cosecant, which we abbreviate CSC. And basically you're just taking and putting one over your y values. Or, depending on what that y value is, just kind of writing the reciprocal. Okay. The other thing to keep in mind is with cosecant and cotangent, y cannot equal zero. It would be undefined at that point. And for tangent and secant, x cannot equal zero because they would be undefined at that point. But let's actually like put it into practice. So let's try and find the six trig functions of t equals pi over six. <coughs> so we've got the sine of pi over six, which equals one half. The cosine of pi over 6, which equals root 3 over 2. And then the tangent. This is the one I really want you to focus on because if you were to look at the unit circle, okay, you know that pi over 6 is basically this one down here, right? Which, of course, is root 3 and then 1 half is the point. So you can see where okay, you've got cosine and sine or x and then y. So cosine is root 3 over 2, sine is 1 half, tangent you have to put them over one another. So you basically have 1 half over root 3 over 2, which is the same as 1 half times 2 root 3. 2 is cancel out, giving you 1 over root 3, but we can't have a radical on the bottom. So we multiply the top and the bottom by root 3, and we get root 3 over 3. Alright, so now go ahead and try to find, I want you to try and find the cosecant of pi over 6, the secant of pi over 6, and the tangent of pi over 6. And based on what we have up here, it really shouldn't be that difficult. So go ahead and take a minute, pause it, take a quick second and see what you get. Alright, so if you're just coming back, you should have gotten these numbers. So basically, again, you flip this. This one's pretty easy, just 2. You flip this, though, and what you get is, you know, 2 over root 3. You can't have a radical on the bottom again. So radical 3 times top and the bottom, you get 2 root 3 over 3, which is how we got that. And then this, you have root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. When you do all that you got to do, that cancels out, giving you that. Okay, so hopefully, I know I'm going through it kind of quick, but hopefully it makes sense. Okay, now let's try one that's a little bit harder. So find the six trig functions of 3 pi over 2 and do this on your own 
Uh, really think about it. If it helps, what I like to do if I'm stuck and want to kind of figure out where to go, figure out where 3 pi is over here on my unit circle so I know that this is, you know, pi over 2 right here. This is 2 pi over 2 right here. So 3 pi over 2 down here. Not only is that 2 pi over 2, but that's just pi. So for 3 pi over 2, we're talking about the point 0. Oops. Let's put that back in there. We're talking about the point 0, negative 1. <coughs> so should be a little bit easier to figure out, but go ahead on your own. See if you can come up with the correct answers, which should be negative 1 for sine, 0 for cosine, undefined for tangent, negative 1 for cosecant, undefined for secant, and 0 for cotangent. And again, you've got this point basically negative, you've got 0, negative 1, okay, which again we said was cosine and sine. So you can see sine, negative 1. Cosine, 0. Okay, cosecant is the inverse of sine. Okay, the inverse of negative 1 is still negative 1. And so even if we take negative 1 over 1 and we um, change it so that it's 1 over negative 1, it's still going to be negative 1. Just like this is still going to be, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, not that it's still going to be 0 because if you take cosine, which if we look at it, it's 0 over negative 1, which is fine. We can do that. We just get 0. But the inverse, you flip it, you get negative 1 over 0, which we cannot do. That's undefined. And tangent, which was negative 1 over 0, becomes 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0. And that's okay. This one is not. All right? All right, so now as far as determining the sine of the trig functions or the sine of the points that you're going to be using, here's basically how the rundown. Only certain, other than quadrant one where everything is positive, in each of the other quadrants you have the um, trig function and their inverse are positive. So sine and cosecant, tangent are positive in quadrant two. Tangent and cotangent are also positive in quarter, or quadrant three. Cosecant and secant are also positive in quadrant four. So the way to remember this, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. So this is all. As long as you can remember what the inverse function is, you're good. So we're going to just say, we'll call that sign. I'll come back to what this stands for. Sine away tangent and then cosine. So basically we remember this is all students take calculus. So if you start in quadrant one and go two, three, four, all students take calculus. And you should be like, okay, students, that's S, that's sine and cosine. Take, that's T, that's tangent and cotangent. Calculus, that's C, that's cosecant and secant. So, and that'll tell you which ones are positive in that quadrant, and all the rest are then, of course, negative. So, just an easy way to remember that. So, for example, you're going to be, this is where using the reference angle comes in handy. So, we want to find the value of the sine of 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6, if we were to draw a unit circle, which I like to do just to have, is right there. Okay? And we know that sine is positive in that quadrant. So we're basically talking about what is the point of positive sine pi over 6, which is 1 half. As we go to pi over 6, and remember, sine is our y value, so we have root 3 over 2 and 1 half. That's the y value, so that's sine. Now, cotangent, cotangent of negative pi over 3. So if we go negative pi over 3, that's in 
quadrant 4, right? And negative pi over 3, that's going to be right there. Okay, so now you're talking about the point 1 half root 3 over 2, and that's a negative root 3 over 2. But we don't even need to bother with that because we know that it's negative because we're in quadrant 4. And <coughs> cotangent, which is the opposite of tangent, is negative in that quadrant. So you get an answer of root 3 over 3. Because again, cotangent, instead of being opposite over adjacent, we have adjacent over opposite. Or in this case, we have, excuse me, we got 1 half over negative 3 root 2, which is the same as 1 half times 2 root 3, which gives us 1 over root 3. Again, can't have that, so root 3 over 3 is your answer. And then you don't even need to do this because we know it's negative because of the quadrant. So we just take our answer and then put the negative sign in front because its cotangent is negative in that quadrant. And then finally, we've got the tangent of 15 pi. So the tangent of 15 pi, that's unique because we know that just if there's if it's not over anything then we're talking about basically pi is here 2 pi is here so if it's an even number then we know it's at this point but if it's an odd number it's at this point okay so since it's odd we're going to end up right here okay so the tangent of 15 pi is basically the same as tangent of pi and then the tangent of pi, tangent is uh, basically, like we've said, tangent is right there. If we were to take your x and your y, you would end up with 0. Okay? Because you would have 0 over negative 1, which equals 0. Okay, important to remember, because it's tangent is undefined when it's here and here, but it's zero when it's here and here. Okay, and then when you're talking about the inverses, you just need to make sure you understand that as well. There is a chart in your book, which I'll point you to when I see you next, that tells you when and where those things are. All right, so tomorrow we're going to be using calculators to find trig functions. And no, you haven't done this quite the same way as you may have in other classes. Again, Kind of like I mentioned, we're going to be dealing in radians, so that's the big difference. But you'll be fine, trust me. All right, everyone, have a good evening.